Hey everybody, welcome to our next exit. Well, we made it. This here is the Owyhee Canyon Man. And that right there, my friends, is the Owyhee River. We're camped out on the old historic uh, Birch Creek Ranch. We've got the perfect site. We're here all along. And uh, they couldn't get much better, in my opinion anyway. Pearl might have a little bit different story. Our first day was pretty rough. But uh, this is Wednesday, day three on a five day trip. And uh, I'd say it's going pretty darn good. One thing we had, Pearl had one stipulation and I had a couple, but she said, I'm not going on no five day camping trip in that Jeep without taking a shower. So let me show you how we got over that hurdle. You trying to say that's a heavy bucket? I'm saying this is a steep trail. <laughs> <laughs> That's for your shower? Yeah. I got to admit, after three days on the trail, we both appreciated that uh, hot shower. We got a tankless shower. It was a couple hundred bucks. It works perfect. Works just like your home shower. The problem was getting down to the river and getting the water and trying to get that whole five gallons back up on top. I think I ended up with a full gallon. If I'm lucky. But uh, it worked great. Pearl's happy, she got her shower, and uh, we're ready for the next day. The problem with the next day is we're supposed to cross the river, do a river crossing. We've never really done a river crossing, but that's what's in store for us. And so I want, one of my things is I want to get a lift and 35 inch tires. I got no idea how to do that. I got a rough idea. But my son-in-law knows exactly how to do that. Putting in a lift kit is definitely not rocket science, but it's de definitely a little bit more than I wanted to buy it off, especially by myself. But as you can see, all it is is installing four bigger springs, bigger heavy duty springs to kind of lift it up, four new shocks, Fox shocks, uh, with a little bit longer travel on them, and a couple of control arms just to get these bigger 35 inch tires on the Jeep and it gives us a couple of inches of higher clearance. Not a big deal, but it uh, makes a major difference, or at least I'm counting on it making a major difference. So do we need these bigger tires to do that river crossing in Hawaii? I don't know, but uh, I think it'd make it more fun and make us both feel just a little bit better. And they look pretty cool. We also added these Apex uh, sway bar disconnects where you just uh, flip the lever and uh, it releases the anti-sway bar and then when you're done off-roading, ready, ready to go back on the highway, you flip it back and uh, as soon as the sway bars come back down where they belong, it locks it in down there. So it's pretty easy peasy and I think we'll appreciate that quite a bit. So bottom line, we had a really good four day trip, but the first day, as I mentioned earlier, it was a little bit rough. Pearl drove about 250 miles from Elko, Nevada, up to uh, Owyhee Lake. And then from Owyhee Lake, we had to climb up this mountain, a little over a thousand feet to get to uh, Sucker Creek. That's where we camped the first night. And that was a brutal road. It's uh, 30 miles, and it's a shelf road, and it's a very narrow shelf road, uh, one lane. So if we met somebody, one of us is gonna have to back up and, and probably back up a long ways. It looked more like this valley here instead of that peaceful valley I showed you a second ago. We have no film of that day because it was so stressful. To be honest, if I was by myself, I would have had a good time. It was a fun, rocky shelf road 
but it uh, a lot of views and stuff but Pearl is just nervous about heights and shelf roads and it made for a miserable day but once we got past the first day going on to the second day things picked up in a real nice way let me show you some of that video maintained roads where we were headed down to Leslie's Gulch which is the most popular part of uh, Owyhee Canyon. It's got these rock formations it was formed I, I don't know much about them but they are awesome to see they look like they're out of this world. We stayed at Slocum Creek Campground I think's the name of it. There's about eight spots. Uh, we could have skipped that we didn't like that so much. There's a lot of BLM land. We could camp in a lot of places. We went up to see uh, Devil's Gate Rock, up to Three Fingers Rock. Took a lot of side trails. Probably drove 60 miles or so the second day. And uh, driving the trails and roads were great, but the campground was just so so. Everybody talks about don't be driving around if it's rained recently. One is the roads can get super muddy, super slick. It's really uh, hazardous even with four wheel drive. And then my big thing was I wanted to do that water crossing. And if it rained a couple of days ago, the water level might be up or it might be flowing pretty strong. I'm pretty concerned about that. To be honest, that's the real reason that we came all the way to Hawaii Canyon. I wanted to get my first real water crossing. So we're gonna go fill up with gas, then we're gonna go down, we gotta go, we're up, we're up on the top, we gotta to go down 12, 1500 feet to Birch Creek Ranch. It's an abandoned ranch that the BLM has purchased. And uh, I don't know if you'd call it a museum, but basically you can walk all the way around, look through all the windows, check it out. And uh, it's just like the ranch was back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Chef Rose, you saw earlier. Well, this big rock on, Pearl's on the passenger yeah. side, and that's where it's it goes up. So one. that doesn't bother her quite as much. Plus, it was a little bit big. wider. So she did okay on the Chef Rose, but this bouncing uh, here on the trail, if you watched our videos very much, you know Pearl gets vertigo. Huh? And this bouncing makes her head just go dizzy or spinning, or just makes her really uncomfortable. And to be honest, I love this off-road. Pearl tolerates it, as you can kind of tell. As soon as we get back to swing the ground, 
she'll be just fine. It all goes away. But it is really tough doing that bouncing. Luckily, the roads were not wet. Creek. They were dry. These are just springs yep. that our water yeah. flows yeah. Uh, down the road and goes away. I guess it does it, you know, year round. I don't know. But the roads were great. So it, if it's historic, it has to have been here for what? 50, 100 years? Oh, I think over 100, yeah. Over 100? So Pearl made a pretty good comment. She said, what would it cause people to live here 100 years ago in such a wild and remote location? That's a good question, because even with our Jeeps, we're a little bit nervous about driving down here, much less 100 years ago. So I looked up uh, a little bit of information, and I found this book. And it talks a lot about the Basque and still in this region. I found it very wow. amazing. Oh, it would be sweet to look inside. Yeah, we the life they lived and the things they went through just to live here. There be a gate or entrance, I think. It doesn't say not to enter. No, it yeah. doesn't say. So far, so good. So we'll park right here and just go on. Yeah, in the shade. Yeah. So this is obviously not one of the original buildings. The Make sure you're off the road. First Creek Ranch was originally settled back in around 1900 by a Basque family named uh, Juan Domingo La Corica, something like that. And uh, Juan died shortly in the early 1900s driving a freight wagon, horse-drawn freight wagon down that trail that you saw us coming down that real steep trail. The brake failed, broke, spooked the horses, they took off, it bounced him out of the freight wagon, the wagon ran over him, broke both of his legs, and uh, he took his shirt off and his knife, stuck his shirt in the dirt with that knife, and he tried to then crawl down to the river, but the shirt was the mark where he fell off so people would hunt for him and find him, but he died before he got to the river, See, before anybody was... found him, and then he was buried here somewhere. There's a lot of old farming equipment. There's a lot of, there's a stone house that uh, we didn't see that or I don't remember seeing it. And this here is an old water wheel that they used to uh, irrigate some uh, pasture land. He got, uh, I understand he had to go to the, I think it's the Sun, Denver, Colorado to get the lumber and stuff, the things he needed to make that water wheel. That would have been quite a trip. There's your water wheel, all right. Yeah. There you do. And I think it functioned as a, mostly a sheep Why ranch, but a sheep and cattle ranch later on, until, I think 1988 is when the BLM purchased it. Uh, so it's got quite a history. Oh, look at the equipment up here. Yeah, I see that. Wow. Can you drive? equipment up there. Man. And so now we're headed up to what uh, historically has been called the Owahi River Crossing. And that's where I think we're going to try to cross the river tomorrow. I'm going to get out and walk across it, make sure how deep it is. I think we can go up to like 30 inches in our Jeep. But the big deal is the pressure. How strong is the uh, flow? And it's starting to look a little bit stronger the closer I'm getting to it. So here's the river crossing. And we plan on uh, crossing it in the morning. We're going to go make camp and uh, go on over. I'm pretty excited, a little nervous. So I got out and I walked down to the river. I was going to walk across to see just how deep it got, how strong the current is, and make sure it was a kind of a rocky bottom to where I wouldn't get stuck. And bad news. I walked about maybe eight or ten feet in and the current was so strong I couldn't stand up. It's pushing me over. I didn't actually fall down but I come close to it. I don't think we can do it. We've come all this way, it's been a fun trip, but I think it's a little bit above my pay grade. This is not a river crossing that we're ready for. So we pack up, we go to camp, 
and start discussing our options. I gotta say, that was disappointing. That was very disappointing for you, I'm sure. It was. It was the whole point of driving 250 miles, going to Owyhee Canyon. It was beautiful. I loved it. It was enjoyable to see the scenery and everything. But that kind of crossing that river took me more into the big, big boy. Big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get that behind me, but it just, it was just that stream was too strong, the current. Yeah. Or for, at least for my skill level. I don't, I don't know. And I know you didn't really want to do it, bro. No, I didn't really want to do it. And I'm so glad that you decided that it was a little bit more than what we yeah. should undertake. I think probably we could have made it, but it's just too big a risk. Yeah. And what we do if we didn't make it. That's a long walk out. <laughs> so we talk a lot about, and a number of people have commented on our past videos that Seems like I like this a lot more than you do. And from that first day, I think I remember you saying something like, I'll never do this again. <laughs> you were not a happy camper. That first day I was pretty miserable. Yeah. My vertigo was just, it put me under. Yeah, and you were on the pasture side and you're right where it cut off and it went down a long ways. Yes, it did. And I know you just can't control that. But as soon as we get past those things, it's like a magic shield come off and you take your mask off and say, oh, I'm Sweet Pearl again. Oh, I love bet. Sweet Pearl. <laughs> so are you looking forward to doing some off-roading here in Arizona still? I am looking forward to doing off-roading. I don't want to go for as many days at a time as you want to. The hot shot, now that, I didn't talk about it much, but that shower, it has uh, propane heat. It was yes. nice and hot water, it plenty was. of uh, water pressure. Yes. And luckily, Owyhee River is uh, pretty clean and clear. Yes. So Thank that goodness. worked pretty good, huh? It worked very, very yeah, well. Yeah, I enjoyed that shower. <laughs> and then we had that catch pan where you can drain all of the water away. Away, yeah. So all in all, I give it a B plus for a trip. It was, for me, it was awesome. You'd probably give it a C minus. No, I wouldn't give it a C minus. I would probably give it a good B. I enjoyed the scenery yeah. and I enjoyed us being together and enjoying, you know, you having a great time. <laughs> that does make it fun. You see, most people doing this off-roading and it's just guys doing it by themselves. Yeah. And it's so much more fun having you to do it with. Well, I enjoy When that you part. got a smile on your face. <laughs> Stop it. So that's about it. That's a Wahi Canyon. We had, I had a great time. Pearl had a we pretty had good time most of the days. We cut off the fifth day. Since we didn't do the water crossing, we went and spent the night and we left to come home on Thursday. So I could go visit with my daughter a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had some more projects to do on the Jeep. We put some rock sliders and stuff with my son-in-law. Oh, yeah. And uh, a couple more things, I forgot what. The but lights, the little, the little lights. No, I did that before we got there. Okay. But uh, it was a great time. We got back to Yuma a little bit early. It's. Uh, the 8th of October, we've been home almost a week, like the no, second or third. We've been home three or four days. Okay. So we got like home the first week of October, and it's at least a month, if not two months, too soon. It's 105 or 6 It outside. was 109 the first two days while we were back. Yeah, it's hot. And then it just barely went down. It's supposed to be in the high 90s next week. But the air conditioner is working good. It's working great in the house. I hate to see our electric bill. It's been like $75 a month, every month since we've owned the house. We run it even in the summer when we're gone. I bet it's three, four, maybe even $500. We'll see. It could be, but- But we're cool. We're comfortable. comfortable. And you're happy. <laughs> Thank you. So that covers our trip to Oahe Canyon. Canyon. I loved it. Pearl tolerated it. It was a good trip. And we're going to have some more adventures here in Arizona on some off-roads over the next few months. Right. So I hope you folks enjoyed it almost as much as we did. I hope you enjoyed it almost as much as yeah. he did. <laughs> <laughs> Until we see you guys again next time. Keep the wheels rolling. Stay safe. We'll see you at the next exit. Bye so bye, long, folks. everybody. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Are you here? I'm here. I turned it down, but your box went flying, so I've got to go pick up stuff that flew. Thank you ever so much. No problem. <laughs> I know how it goes. Boy, Thank what you. a mess. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now I've got you. Did you get 
with the machine, the hot water heater? Yes. Thank you, Megan. Do it again. My hair? Yeah.